Okay, assalamualaikum and a very good evening everyone. So for today we are going to cover two parts which are the last two parts in our in our nine chapter, means chapter, okay, yang ke sembilan. So pertama kita akan cover counter current multiplier mechanism dan lagi satu is about um, the regulation of blood water content with the involvement of ADH. Meaning that we are talk we will talk about um, uh, water content in our in our blood and urine. So hari ni kita akan tengok about sebenarnya M kita adalah osmoregulation. Osmoregulation is the regulation of water dalam badan kita ni. Okay, so sebelum saya proceed kita tengok next slide ni. Okay, so ini adalah urine color chart. So kat sini adalah nak kata the, the, the hydration of our body okay, either it is hydrated or dehydrated sebenarnya so, boleh kita ukur ataupun can be measured based on the urine color. So kalau tengok daripada uh, chart ni number one until number three it means that we are hydrated. Kalau urine kita adalah from four to eight okay, so maksudnya we are dehydrated dan kena be aware lah. So apa maksud dehydrated kat sini? Kita kurang air. So what you need to do is drink more fluid. Drink more fluid. Take more water. We have to focus on water. Not the Coca-Cola, not the Pepsi, not the air yang manis-manis. Okay. Sebab we need the water. Okay. We need the water actually. Okay. So kita patah balik. Eh. Okay. Counter current multiplier mechanism ni aim dia adalah yang last ni sebenarnya. Okay. By undergoing counter current multiplier mechanism the characteristic of urine is, okay, first adalah small volume and high. The second one is high concentrated. Meaning that kita nak menghasilkan urine yang sikit dan pekat. That is the, that is the, our, 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 uh, our aim for, for counter current multiplier mechanism or CCMM lah. So, kalau senang nak tulis CCMM lah tapi full name adalah counter current multiplier mechanism. Okay, so first one is to conserve water. Okay, we want to reabsorb more water so that we can conserve water. So we want to prevent dehydration. And then counter current multiplier mechanism is to create water potential gradient in filtrate and interstitial fluid. Ada perbezaan gradient of water potential di dalam interstitial fluid and also inside nephron which is the filtrate. The fluid inside the nephron is called fluid, uh, is called, sorry, is called filtrate. However, the fluid that surrounds the tissue ni dipanggil interstitial fluid. So, kita nak, kita nak create per, uh, water potential between filtrate and interstitial fluid. Kenapa? Lepas ni kita akan fokus, kita akan tengok kenapa. Okay, the second one, uh, the third one is to create high concentration of salt in the interstitial fluid. Okay, kita nak create high and SEL concentration kat dalam, kat dalam interstitial fluid ni sebab apa? Bila high Concentration of NaCl meaning that water potential is low, right? Okay, water potential is low. So what will happen? Okay, bila kita comparekan pula water potential kat mana tinggi adalah water potential di dalam dalam um, uh, filtrate ni. So, kita, so bila kat sini ada perbezaan, so water can diffuse from the area where or from the region where it is high water potential and diffuse out to the lower water potential by uh, osmosis. So dia akan keluar lah daripada high water potential to the lower water potential. Okay. Alright. So saya harap you guys boleh follow kat sini. Yang mana lepas ni kita nak tengok step by step what happen. Okay. However, the focus here, counter current multiplier mechanism, the focus here is at loop of Hindley. Okay. Kawasan dia adalah loop of Hindley sahaja yang kita nak focus on. Okay. Sangat penting lah sebab kita nak tengok characteristic of animals yang mana sangat memerlukan counter current multiplier mechanism. For example adalah dalam uh, 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 animals that live in desert. Okay. Uh, counter current multiplier mechanism lah yang menyelamatkan dia from lost water. Okay and then kita tengok ya uh, direct definition dulu. Okay what is mean by counter current? Counter current meaning that opposite. Opposite. So what we talk about opposite here is the opposite direction of the field trip. So filtrate as the uh, filtrate will um, will apa ni nak kata will will uh, move down descend will move down this will sorry will move down descending limb and move up 
ascending link. Okay, meaning dia kat sini dia opposite direction. Satu dia akan menuruni descending limb, satu lagi dia akan menaiki ascending limb. So, they are different uh, direction here. Okay, they are two different directions. Okay, and then the second one is the, uh, the word multiplier. Okay, multiplier maksudnya multiply. Meaning that multiply, we want to increase. Okay, increase what? Increase the effect. Okay, kita nak increase the effect. Meaning that bila uh, effect apa kita nak uh, effect of uh, producing the small volume and the high concentration urine. So inilah dia multiplier. We want to increase the effect as the fluid move down the descending limb and up the ascending limb. So the effect akan increase. Okay. Then kita tengok pula okay apa step by stepnya. Okay. Sebelum tu kita nak tengok ya adalah okay tengok kat sini. So number kat sini Okay, the numbers here inside nephron and also in the um, medulla, okay, atas ni adalah cortex. Bawah ni adalah medulla. Medulla, atas ni adalah cortex. Okay, so look at here. We are, we will play about the number. We will play the number here. Kita akan main dengan number saja. So you have to focus. Number ni represent apa? Okay, so kita tengok ya ada dua kedua tempat which is cortex dan bawahnya adalah medulla. Okay, so number semua dalam diagram ni represent the osmolarity of uh, osmolarity. Ini that osmolarity. Okay, what is mean by osmolarity? Osmolarity is um, concentration of solute in the solution. Dia berbeza dengan water potential. Water potential, we talk about the water concentration in the solution while in the osmolarity, dia berbeza, berlawanan dengan water potential. So osmolarity is we talk about the solute concentration in solution. Okay, so kalau awak boleh nampak kat sini, semua nombor-nombor ni adalah osmolarity meaning that the concentration of solute, the particle or the, the number of particle in uh, of solute in the solution. Okay, contohnya adalah awak boleh nampak daripada 300 Okay, bila dia menuruni descending limb the, the number increase from 400, 600, 900 and 100 and uh, 1000 and 200 Meaning that the the osmolarity is increasing or uh, uh, solute concentration increase Itu maksud dia Okay, maksudnya bila nombor ni sangat tinggi maksudnya osmolarity or the concentration of solute sangat tinggi however water potential sangat rendah itulah dia yang kita nak tunjuk okay so macam mana kita uh, counter current multiplier mechanism ni berlaku the first one okay kita tengok step by step the first one is okay the filtrate that enter the loop of inlet is isotonic to the interstitial fluid okay so filtrate okay filtrate is the fluid inside nephron so when it enter but it enters loop of Finley, bila dia masuk loop of Finley, awak boleh nampak dia punya, dia punya um, uh, osmolarity dia sama. So bila sama kita panggil sebagai isotonic. Dia sama kan? So kita boleh nampak kalau uh, dekat uh, PCT ni, proximal convoluted tubule dia 300. Dia sama dengan interstitial fluid dekat luar. Sama. And then bila dia menuruni, okay, and then bila dia menuruni dia menuruni ke bawah ni, kita tengok dia bertambah 400. Okay, dan kita akan tengok macam mana 400 ni boleh menjadi 600, 900 more concentrated or more osmolarity. Okay, so kita akan kata mula-mula bila dia masuk loop of Hindi, dia akan sama. Okay, then, okay, so what will happen? Okay, since, okay, so since descending limb is permeable to water, and impermeable to salt or an SCL. So what will happen? Water will diffuse out by osmosis from descending limb into interstitial fluid of medulla. Okay. So yang kedua adalah okay, descending limb is awak kena sebut. Descending limb is permeable to water and impermeable to an SCL. So what will happen? Water will diffuse out by osmosis from where to where? From descending limb into interstitial fluid of medulla. So what will happen? More water reabsorb. Okay, more water reabsorb. What will happen to the filtrate? Awak boleh nampak. 
Osmolarity bertambah from 400 become 600. Why? Because of water diffuse out. Because of the water diffuse out. So kita akan compare kan? Kita akan kata osmolarity dia bertambah lah. Okay and then step 3. Okay step 3 what will happen? Okay filtrate become more concentrated. Okay still the filtrate okay as it move down descending limb of thin leaf it becomes more concentrated or osmolarity increase. Okay, number increase, osmolarity increase kat sini sebenarnya. Okay, so the filtrate is at the highest concentrated when it is at the bottom of the loop of milli. Okay, so kita tengok. The highest concentration of the filtrate is at the bottom of loop of milli. Okay, maksudnya yang semakin dia menurun ni, uh, concentrate concentration bertambah tetapi the highest concentration is at the bottom of the loop of Hindley here. Okay. Meaning that it is the highest when it is at the bottom. Okay. Next adalah what will happen to the filtrate as the filtrate move up ascending limb. What will happen? We will talk about the characteristic of ascending limb. Okay. So ascending limb ni berbeza dengan descending limb. Okay. Kalau tadi descending limb is Permeable to water and impermeable to an SCL. Now the ascending limb is different. Okay, berbeza, berlawanan dengan S, uh, descending limb tadi. So apa yang akan berlaku? Okay, it is impermeable to H, impermeable to H2O and permeable to an SCL. So what will happen? Okay, so what will happen? An SCL will diffuse out. NSCL will diffuse out. Oh, ni nampak. NSCL diffuse out from thin segment of ascending limb into interstitial fluid. Okay, so boleh nampak ya. Okay. Okay, dia akan diffuse out dekat thin segment. However, what happen at the thick segment up here, okay, an SCL will an, an SCL will will be transported out by active transport. Okay, awak boleh nampak warna dia kat sini. Warna purple ni menunjukkan passive transport. Warna um, warna merah ni menunjukkan active transport. Okay, so kita kita tengok ya. Apa yang akan berlaku? Okay, mula-mula. Okay, bila dia kat bawah ni tadi, an SCL diffuse out. So what will happen? Okay, from 100 and to, uh, 1,200 become 700. And then the concentration or the osmolarity of the filtrate reduce. Why? Because it is the solute that diffuse out, which is an SCL. An SCL yang diffuse out. And then what will happen? As it move up through the thick segment here, Okay, daripada 400 become 200. Apa yang berlaku kat sini? Okay, so kat sini kita nak kata solid concentration solid concentration semakin rendah. Solid concentration or the osmolarity semakin rendah. Tetapi an SCL still will transported out. So cara kat sini adalah since kat sini dia punya osmolaritinya semakin rendah so we uh, we will conclude that we conclude that the uh, movement of the NSCL is via active transport. Via active transport. Okay. So kat sini NSCL ni dah kurang dah. Makin kurang. Sebab apa? Sebab masa dekat thin segment tadi dah banyak yang diffuse out. So sekarang ni tinggal sikit. However, NSCL still transported out. However, this one is via active transport. Okay. Then Okay. Uh, tengok ya. Okay. So itulah conclusion dia. So what will happen? Ni dia, dia tak cerita sampai habis pun sebab we focus on loop of Hindi. Okay. We focus on loop of Hindi. So what will happen? What will happen to the filtrate as it move up the ascending limb? 
Okay, the field trade become the field trade become from 200 become 100, meaning that the field trade become diluted, become dilute, okay, become diluted. Why? Because of solute diffused out. What is the solute here? An ACL. So an ACL, cara kat sini, cara dia keluar ataupun cara dia transported out ada dua. Kalau dekat thin segment, it is via diffusion. Kalau dekat thick segment, it is via active transport. Okay, next adalah kita tengok. Alright. So, okay, kita tengok eh. Last kali ni sebenarnya saya nak tunjuk kat sini. Ni adalah um, penting eh. Kita nak tengok urea. Kenapa ada urea kat sini? Okay, kenapa ada urea uh, diffusion? Ini tambahan ya. Eh? Ini, uh, ini tambahan. So, the diffusion of urea is to increase the osmolarity of interstitial fluid. Okay, meaning that, okay, this area, uh, urea will be diffused out into interstitial fluid. So that, Okay, so that osmolarity of the interstitial fluid increase or water potential decrease. So what will happen? More water can be reabsorbed. More water can be reabsorbed. That is the purpose actually. Okay, that is, that is the purpose actually. So we can reabsorb more water. Itulah dia. Kita tak nak buang air. Kita tak nak remove water. Kita nak uh, remove as, as, as small volume as possible. Okay, then. Kita tengok conclusion. The longer the loop of thin leaf, what will happen to the urine? The longer the loop of thin leaf, okay, the more concentrated and small volume urine will be. So less urine is excreted sebab the small volume. And more water can be conserved because more water has, because large amount of water has been reabsorbed. Okay, and then number two, what will happen if the shorter the loop of thin leaf, what will happen? Okay, so kita akan berbeza lah. So it is less concentrated or dilute, dilute urine and, and large volume of urine will be. So more urine will be produced, more frequent we go to the toilet and less water not produced. Less water can be reabsorbed. Okay, that's question. How much urine per day do we produce? It is about 1.5 liter. So 1.5 liter ni lah yang menyebabkan you are frequently go to the toilet. Miss, nak pergi toilet, miss, nak pergi toilet, madam, nak pergi toilet, saya nak pergi toilet. Sebab apa 1.5 liter of urine need to be excreted out. Okay. Alright, so kita tengok pula the comparison. The comparison between these two, okay? Between the two, kat sini, the two types of loop of thin leaf. One is the short loop of thin leaf. The second one is the long loop of thin leaf. Okay, so kita compare. Contohnya adalah, contoh animal yang ada short loop of thin leaf adalah animal yang live in water. For example, fishes. Okay? For the loop of thin leaf yang long ni, for example, dia hidup di tempat yang panas. For example, in desert. Okay. Um, contohnya camel. Okay. Kita ambil contoh paling mudah lah camel. So camel ni ada very very long loop of thin leaf. Why? Because of they can uh, conserve more water. So less urine will be produced and uh, very concentrated urine produced. That is the purpose. Okay. So, sangat penting lah. This is one of the adaptation um, of animals that live in desert, in hot area. Okay. Kawasan yang panas, kawasan yang kurang air. So, ini adalah satu salah satu adaptation. Okay. So, okay. Berbeza dengan fish. Fish tak perlu pun. Sebab apa dia memang hidup dekat air tu. So, dia tak ada istilah dehydration. No need. Okay. Tak ada istilah dehydration. Tak ada pun masalah kat situ. Okay. Next adalah kita tengok the, regulate, the regulation of blood water content. Okay, regulation of blood water content. Tadi we talk about the urine produce. Yang mana via counter current multiplier mechanism. Okay, what, what is the effect? We will get urine with less volume and high concentration. Now we will talk about okay, blood water content. Okay, water content di dalam blood. Dalam blood, not in urine, di dalam blood. Okay, so kita bagi situasi eh. Situasi yang pertama adalah situasi um, panas. Okay, situasi yang kedua adalah situasi yang mana sejuk ataupun 
you drink lots of water. Buat minum banyak air. Okay, you drink lots of water. Okay, so apa yang akan berlaku kepada um, blood water content kita and what is the effect actually. Okay, so the regulation of water content is actually in the term of osmoregulation. Regulation, osmo. Osmo meaning water. So the regulation of water. Okay, with the with using antidiuretic hormone, ADH. Okay, you have to bear in mind eh, jangan confuse sangat lah. Sebab antidiuretic ni saya takut awak confuse perkataan perkataan dia. Okay, diuretic ni, okay, senang nak ingat lah. Diuretic ni maksudnya lebih, uh, diuretic ni menyebabkan, diuretic maksudnya awak nak pergi, nak terkencing. Okay, antidiuretic meaning that, that hormone, antidiuretic hormone meaning that it will lead you to less terkencing. That is antidiuretic hormone. So, maksudnya, Semakin banyak ADH dihasilkan, semakin kuranglah urine kita dihasilkan. Okay? Sebab apa? ADH ni macam saya kata tadi, dia akan menyebabkan, dia adalah antidiuretik, dia anti-kencing. So, awak kurang nak rasa nak terkencing. So, indicate kurang urine dihasilkan. Okay, so kita tengok dua situation eh. The first one, the first situation is when we are excessively sweating or we eat salty meal ataupun salty food contohnya adalah benda yang yang yang, yang masin ni kan banyak garam okay banyak garam okay so what will happen okay kita ambil, kita ambil contoh excess sweating so what will happen blood volume kita decrease why sebab kita berpeluh berpeluh so kita akan mengeluarkan water so blood volume decrease and osmotic pressure increase Okay, osmotic pressure pula apa miss? Osmotic pressure is the pressure created because of osmo, uh, because of um, apa ni? Uh, tadi, sekejap ya, saya tengok balik. Because of the osmolarity. Okay, because of the osmolarity. Osmolarity. Okay, maksud kat sini, bila blood volume, bila volume kita berkurang, maksudnya, Osmolarity kita bertambah, kepekatan kepekatan uh, solution tu bertambah atau kepekatan darah tu bertambah. Okay, osmolarity. Kepekatan darah tu, okay, will create osmotic pressure. So, the changes in the osmotic pressure and the blood volume here will be detected by the osmoreceptor which is in hypothalamus. Di mana hypothalamus? Di dalam brain kita. Okay. Dalam brain kita ni dia de, dia bahagian bawah. Okay, bahagian kalau kepala kita dia bahagian bawah sikit ni. Dia dekat dengan um, area bawah sikit lah macam medula medula oblongata. Okay, the area situ. Tapi the part yang, ber, yang berbeza lah tapi dia berdekatan. Okay, so kita tahu ya hypothalamus. Okay, dia nak kata dia ada dua gland yang uh, the extension of hypothalamus dia ada two gland. The first one is posterior pituitary gland. The another one yang belakang ni adalah anterior pituitary gland. However, we will focus on posterior pituitary gland. Okay, so posterior pituitary gland will secrete one type of hormone to regulate osmoregulation. Okay, to regulate uh, our our uh, water content in our blood. Okay, so receptor dia apa dia? Hypothalamus. So hypothalamus ni dia akan send information, akan send impulse to the posterior pituitary gland to secrete ADH hormone to secrete ADH antidiuretic hormone okay so dia akan secrete high level of ADH so what will happen ADH will go to the target tissue which are ada dua kat sini kelet tindak and distal tubule distal tubule ni adalah DCT tu okay the second the second last of our nephron okay dia akan act on the last two part of our nephron. Okay. So, ni contoh dia. Okay. So, kat mana dia act on? Di sini eh. Dekat DCT and also dekat collect tindak. Okay. So, what will happen? What is the effect of ADH on these two structure? The first one is it will increase the permeability of DCT and uh, collecting duct towards water. Okay, Me, when it means increase permeability, so more water can be reabsorbed. So more water can be reabsorbed. More water can be reabsorbed keluar daripada nephron. So what will happen? 
Okay, since more water can be reabsorbed, so the urine produced is less. Okay, and concentrated. Itulah dia. So, conclusion adalah bila awak kurang minum air, okay, ataupun kita eat something salty, so what will happen? Okay, blood volume kita berkurang lah. And also, blood volume berkurang, osmotic pressure tu uh, increase. Why? Because of the increase in osmolarity. Sebab air dah keluar, okay, because of water dah keluar, Okay, uh, so the, the solute concentration kita akan kata bertambah. Okay, solute concentration is osmolarity. So, osmotic pressure akan tinggi juga. So, the changes here will be detected by here, os, uh, hypothalamus. So, hypothalamus will send impulse to the posterior pituitary gland to secrete ADH. So, antidiuretic hormone is secreted uh, in high amount. Okay, so what will happen? Uh, what will happen, it will act on these two uh, which are collecting duct and uh, collecting duct and DCT. So what will happen, DCT and collecting duct will increase their perme permeability towards water and more water can be reabsorbed. So what will happen, the urine produced is less in volume and more concentrated. Okay, the last one is what will happen if you drink large amount of water ini dia kita berlawan pula. Kita benda ni adalah against or uh, vice versa of uh, yang tadi eh, yang yang kita discuss tadi about the ADH high, uh, effect of high ADH. So when when we drink large amount of water, so what will happen? Blood volume will increase and osmotic pressure decrease. Then this change, this, this, okay, these changes are detected by osporeceptor in hypothalamus. So, hypothalamus, ni bukan ya, bukan hypothalamus secret. It is posterior pituitary gland will secret more amount of ADH. So, what will happen? It will reduce the permeability of DCT and collecting duct towards water. So, since less permeability, so less water reabsorbed. So what will happen to the urine? Okay, so more volume produced and diluted urine produced. Itulah dia. So that is the conclusion. Alright, so that's all from me for today. Thank you everyone. Kalau ada soalan apa-apa, boleh tanya dalam kelas. Alright, so thank you.